This year, I'm focusing on our principles and our sources for Unitarian Universalism. In the fall, we looked at our principles, and now we're looking at the sources that we've, uh, that our Unitarian Universalists have come together and said, these are what we draw from. You know, uh, we Unitarian Universalists do not have a creed, so we do not have something that says this is what everybody must believe. We do not have a sacred text that we say everything in here is literal. This is what we have to look at and follow. Uh, we do not have one person that is our supreme prophet that everyone follows every word they do. So where do we draw our inspiration from if we don't have these things? Well, we do draw from many places, and we draw from various sources. And last time I shared about our first source, which was direct experience of that transcending mystery and wonder. Our second source is this one. Let's read this together. Words and deeds of prophetic women and men, which challenge us to confront powers and structures of evil with justice, compassion, and the transforming power of love. We draw from these sources, these words and deeds of men and women. So again, we have our unpackers to come. We've got our box. This is our source. We're going to unpack it and look at some of these words and think what this may have meant to those who put this forth as a source and what they may mean for us. And the first thing they're unpacking, the first part of this, is words and deeds of prophetic women and men. Um, as we look at this, one of the words that is confusing with a lot of folks is prophetic. What do we mean by prophetic? Sometimes when we think of prophecy, we think of um, the oracle or the, uh, the, you walk in and somebody has a crystal ball or these folks are saying gloom and doom, here's what's going to happen to the world, these are the prophets. But that is not what our ancestry meant when they wrote these words about prophecy and prophetic women and men. Here's the word prophetic, and the person that I think about when I try to explain prophetic or prophecy is James Luther Adams. Now, James Luther Adams uh, wrote a piece called The Prophethood of All Believers. I grew up Southern Baptist, and maybe some of you did, and or with, were parts of other groups that may have emphasized the priesthood of all believers. But he's talking about the prophethood of all believers. James Luther Adams was a theologian, Unitarian Universalist theologian, uh, that actually taught before I was there at Meadville Lombard. And many of the students and the faculty at Meadville Lombard would refer to him as JLA, kind of like they, he was their best buddy, you know. And it was almost like he was still around. Somebody would say something in the class, and they'd say, don't let JLA hear you saying that, you know. So he was somebody we lifted up and revered. Let me share with you what he says about our prophets. According to JLA, the prophet views human life from a piercing perspective and brings an imperative sense of the perennial and inescapable struggle of good against evil, of justice against injustice. And he says that a prophet shakes us out of our pride and calls for a change of heart and mind and action. With fear and trembling, the prophet announces crisis and demands ethical decisions here and now. Not in some future thing, but we're talking about here. He talks about the prophethood of all believers, but he also talks about how the church itself, the liberal religious church, and he's speaking specifically himself to the Unitarian Universalist churches, and he says that the, the church, the Unitarian Universalist congregation, should be the prophetic liberal church. What is that? Will you read this with me? The prophetic liberal church is the church in which all members share the common responsibility to attempt to foresee the consequences of human behavior, both individual and institutional, with the intention of making history in place of merely being pushed around by it. Love those words. That we're going to make history instead of just being pushed around by it. We have that opportunity through our own words and deeds, and not just the words and deeds of someone who has a title, minister, but of everyone, the prophethood of everyone in the congregation. 
Let's take the first part about that. Using your words. A very famous prophet was the prophet Isaiah. He said that God told him to go up on a bare hill, raise a signal, cry aloud to them, and wave your arms. You know, be a prophet. Use your words. And indeed, that's what he did. He used his words. And we have many folks that we lift up for using their words to share with us, to call us out, to, to tell us truth, truth tellers. The closest thing we have as Unitarian Universalists to a sacred text, I suppose, is the, are the readings in the back of our hymnal. I don't know if you spent much time looking at those readings in the back of the hymnal, but they are wonderful. We had a hymnal selection committee that worked very hard in selecting a group of readings that we could use in our worship services, and of course we use others as well, but that we could use and lift up. And the, what they did in the back of the hymnal, if you look at it, they divided these up according to the six sources. So there's one part that's direct experience, and there's one part, as you see here, of words and deeds of prophetic women and men. What we don't have time to share all these. You can look at them later. But I do want to lift up some just to give you a little bit of an experience of the kinds of things we've lifted up as Unitarian Universalists. Here's some of the words and some of the folks. Dorothy Day. Now, she was a social activist that actually helped found the Catholic worker movement. She says, A pebble cast into a pond causes ripples that spread in all directions. Each one of our thoughts, words, and deeds is like that. No one has a right to sit down and feel hopeless. We need to hear that, don't we? There's too much work to be done. Very famous one here, Margaret Mead. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Anthropologist Margaret Mead. Now, I have a little chalice by some of these because some of these folks are our own Unitarians or Universals or Unitarian Universals. This is Ralph Waldo Emerson. We actually talked about him last time I was here as a transcendentalist. He was also a Unitarian minister. He said, A person will worship something. Have no doubt about that. That which dominates our imaginations and thoughts will determine our lives and character. Therefore, it behooves us to be careful what we worship. For what we are worshiping, we are becoming. Margaret Fuller, another transcendentalist, another Unitarian. We would have every path laid open to woman as freely as to man. Were this done, we believe a divine energy would pervade nature to a degree unknown in the history of former ages. A new manifestation is at hand. A new hour is come. Margaret Fuller, a woman of words. We all lift up Gandhi's words often when we think about nonviolence. He said, nonviolence is not a garment to put on and off at will. Its seat is in the heart, and it must be an inseparable part of our being. Frederick Douglass is another prophet we lift up. He said, power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did, and it never will. The limits are prescribed by the endurance of those whom they oppress. And then, of course, Martin Luther King, Jr. We read this often in here. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. There are some things in our social system to which all of us ought to be maladjusted. Those are words that are important. And there are many others I could have selected. I'm just giving you a sampling of some. Because words do matter. Words do matter. We have a, um, a grief group that meets here every couple of weeks, and it happens to be that in this group, grief group that uh, all the members happen to be women. We are journaling and we are sharing with our words various things about our grief and about our experiences. 
This last time we met, we were going around doing just that with folks sharing. And then we got to one person. We shared for about, people share for about five minutes, uninterrupted. We got to one person, she said, instead of my speaking, I think I'd like for us to just have a couple of minutes to be together in silence. And that's what we did. And it was so timely at that point that we do that together. And it really made me think about this. We're always in telling, telling people to tell it out. Use your words. So important. But sometimes what is important is saying nothing. Saying nothing. Doing nothing. Maybe just giving a hug. Just a smile. Your deeds, even silent deeds, are so important. It's a part of our prophetic prophecy. So let's think about that. Some prophets of deeds, including many you use, by the way. Now, Greg and I just brainstormed who these folks might be. There's so many prophets of deeds that we could lift up. But we were sitting around and we said, who are some of them? And we just made a list of a few of them. So I want to share with you what kind of folks I'm talking about. Because when we're talking about prophets of deeds, this doesn't mean these folks did not write or did not use their words. Many of them did write and did use words. But when we think about these kinds of people, we think about them out there doing the stuff, organizing groups, uh, helping people, nursing people, doing the stuff. So here are some examples. This is Dorothea Dix. She was an American activist. Um, and she, especially on behalf of the indigent and sane, and she had a big lobbying program that related to finally developing some kind of help for these folks. During the Civil War, she served as superintendent of army nurses, and you see the chalice that she was one of us, Dorothea Dix. We all know the name Florence Nightingale. She was a celebrated English social reformer. She was an English Unitarian. She was also a statistician. She was the founder of modern nursing. And I love this quote. It's especially relevant for what we're talking about today. Florence Nightingale said, I think one's feelings waste themselves in words. They ought all, be, they ought all to be distilled into actions which bring results. Clara Barton was a universalist. She has a powerful st uh, story of deeds where she was taking supplies out to the battlefield. She volunteered her over and over again during the Civil War, did that. She nursed the wounded soldiers. And of course, she later founded the American Red Cross, and she served as their president for 23 years. She was a woman of deeds, a prophet of deeds. Harriet Tubman, she escaped slavery and became a leading abolitionist. She led hundreds of enslaved people to freedom along the Underground rail Railway uh, route. She was nicknamed a Moses of the people. And you remember Moses himself said, I'm not, I'm not good with words, you know. So she was a Moses of the people. She did express herself in words, but we think of her and what she did. Uh, she also was a Union Army Scout and nurse during the Civil War, and she was named by President Barack Obama as an American hero. Jane Addams, a pioneer American settlement activist reformer. She founded the Hall House. She was also a philosopher, a sociologist, and she was also a leader in women's suffrage. Mary White Ovington is one of my personal heroes. She was co-founder of the NAACP, and she was later the executive director. She worked tirelessly in the field and at the national level, organizing folks, even into her old age. Mary White Ovington, and she was a Unitarian Universalist. Or Unitarian. And we think of Eleanor Roosevelt. Now, Eleanor Roosevelt lot, wrote lots of words, didn't she? But we, I think of Eleanor Roosevelt as a doer out there with working with folks. And you can't leave out Mother Teresa, who founded the Missionaries of Charity. She devoted her life to the poorest of the poor, working with them. I didn't know about this person. Greg lifted this person's name up. His name is Dr. Norman Borland. He was the father of the Green Revolution. What he did was develop uh, a species of, of wheat that was, uh, would grow well and that was disease resistant. 
and then he went around to these poor countries and helped them in developing it. He is given credit for saving the lives of a billion people or more. And for that, he was a Nobel Prize winner of the Peace Prize. I was fortunate enough when I did, did the um, tour in Mississippi following the Freedom Summer, the 50th anniversary, I took a little bus tour with folks. We went to the places where Fannie Lou Hamer, we went to her hometown and saw where she was buried and heard more about her. She was certainly a woman that spoke her words, but what I did not know was what all the work on the ground she did of organizing people, getting them to register as, to vote. She was a doer. And Whitney Young, he was one of us, Unitarian Universalists. He was the director of the National Urban League, and he transformed that organization from a kind of passive organization to one that was very uh, passionate and active for civil rights. Cesar Chavez, we know that this was the American, Mexican-American farm worker, labor leader, civil rights activist. Uh, he co-founded the National Farm Workers Association. Again, he did use his words, but we remember him as someone out in the field doing, organizing folks. So these are doers of the word. We used to sing about that at the Baptist Church when I was a junior. Be ye doers of the word. Not hearers only, but doers of the word. They're people that are prophets of deeds. So these folks have words and deeds. Words and deeds which challenge us to confront powers and structures of evil. Now, look at those words. And especially this word. When I was working on this sermon, my son John called me. He says, what you doing, Mama? I said, well, I'm hunting an image that I can use with my sermon to depict evil. And then I added, maybe I'll just put a picture of, and I named a person that said the news. <laughs> So then I had to, had to hear John talking about his view of this individual as well, which he agrees with me. But in reality, I did not put up that picture because we as Unitarian Universalists, really, we lift up the inherent worth and dignity of everyone. So how am I going to personify someone as evil? That doesn't go with our principles, does it? This is a strong word, and there are many things and ways to think about this. There are folks that think about evil as a supernatural force. All the way from that, various theologies, philosophies that don't think that evil exists at all. It's all relative and everything in between. This word is worth a sermon in itself. And I will give it to you, but not today. But regardless of what you may think about this particular word, I think we can all agree that there are some things, as Martin Luther King Jr. said, there are some things in our systems to which all of us ought to feel maladjusted. So we'll put it that way. So we're working against those. We're speaking out against them and we're working against these things and trying to lift up other things. How are we working though? What are our tools What are that we're going to use as we work with these? Not with bombs. With justice, compassion, and the transforming power of love. This is how we should be working against evil or against these systems that are maladjusted. With justice, compassion, and the transforming power of love. Is this what we see folks doing though today? Not if you watch television sometimes. They're not using justice, compassion, the transforming power of love. That's what the group that Joe Bill and I have been working with are trying to do, aren't we, Joe Bill? We are trying our best with a beloved community to address a problem, but we're trying to do it with justice, compassion, and the transforming power of love. And that is our second source. Share these words again with me. Words and deeds of prophetic women and men which challenge us to confront powers and structures of evil with justice, compassion, and the transforming power of love. This is one of the six sources that we lift up as Unitarian Universalists. And what I lifted up with you was people in our history. But it's not just in our history. We have prophets among us. We have real prophets sitting here in this room today. 
I'm not going to name them or I'll leave somebody out. Hopefully it's all of you that are prophets of words and deeds helping us to confront powers of structure and evil with justice, compassion, and the transforming power of love. And my challenge to you today, because I don't want you leaving here without some homework, right? Something to do, not just to hear but do. So my challenge today, this is one of our sources, but my challenge is that we not only draw from this source, from others' words and deeds, but my challenge is that every one of us is to be the source, be the source, be the light on the hill. As members of a prophetic congregation, we should use our voices and deeds to confront the powers and structure of evil with justice, compassion, and the transforming power of love. We can do that in many different ways, even by sometimes just asking for a little silence. Please join us in doing so. Amen. Blessed be.